Hello everyone, I'm Zhishun Guo from University of Notre Dame. Today, I want to present our paper, Field Shot Graph Learning for Molecular Property Prediction. And here is the outline. Firstly, I want to briefly introduce what is molecular property prediction. Here is a molecule. What we want to do is to design a deep learning model to predict if this molecule has some um, specific properties like solubility, toxicity, or activity. So it is a binary classification problem. So why this problem is very important? Because molecular property is closely related to drugs. And here is a example of a drug discovery process. And uh, as we know in the traditional way, if we want to find a new drug, we need to prepare a lot of molecules first, and then we need to take these molecules to um, take round and round testing to test if these molecules have some um, properties which we want and uh, we also need to test their activity and risk. After these uh, round and round wet lab experimentations, uh, there will be few candidates left for further um, testing. But if we did not find any appropriate uh, candidates uh, after this process, uh, we need to find another um, group molecules to repeat this process to test. So it is a pretty time and resource consuming process. What we want to do is if we can design a good model which can do the molecular property prediction well, we can fail a lot of molecules before they taking uh, wet lab experimentations, uh, which are least likely to become candidates. So it will save both time and resources. And uh, uh, now there are uh, various existing models about the uh, molecular property prediction. And there, for each molecule, uh, they have two input representations. The one is smell string and another is molecular graph. Uh, if we take smell string as input, we can um, take each molecule as a sequence. And we can take sequence-based models like sequ sequence to sequence and the molecular to vec. Uh, this kind of model to learn the uh, molecules and to do the property prediction. And we, if we take molecular graph as input, uh, we can uh, consider each item as a uh, node and each bond as edges. And then we can utilize the graph neural net network to uh, aggregate each item and its neighbors uh, its neighbor atoms and edges information to update itself. And uh, then uh, we can um, use mean pooling to obtain the whole molecule's embeddings and then utilize embeddings to do the molecular property prediction. And uh, there is also uh, some fusion model like uh, which uh, capture both information from the sequence based model and the graph based model like graphic. But for all of these existing models, there, there is a problem because um, we need to uh, feed them a, a great, a, a large amount of data sets to make them uh, obtain good performance. But um, in the chemistry field, for some properties, uh, there is always um, only limited level uh, available label data set. So uh, when we're using the existing model, they cannot learn well for these properties. Here is an analysis of the uh, of a benchmark data set. We can find the x-axis represent uh, different properties and the y represents the number of label molecules for each property. And we can find in the in this uh, 500 properties, there were only about 100 properties which have enough uh, data sets to be trained by the model. But there are a lot of uh, properties which only have less uh, less than 100 molecules to be trained by our, to be learned by our model. So the existing model cannot not perform well uh, for these properties. So what we want to do is to design a model which can learn, um, learn well even when, when some properties only have few examples. And uh, here is our uh, models. Uh, and the uh, first thing I want to mention is uh, we take a molecular graph as input to um, do the to do the um, property prediction. And uh, A is the overall framework of our model which is named uh, MetaMGN. And uh, to improve the effectiveness of our model, we also designed uh, design two 
uh, part the one is the uh, self-supervised module which is applied on um, graph neural network and another one is task aware attention and i will introduce these one by one um firstly i want to uh, i want to let you know because uh, we utilize the graph neural network to learn each molecule's embeddings and to do the prediction. And uh, to improve the performance, we want to um, maximize uh, the information we can obtain from the existing datasets. We also utilize the pre-training strat strategy to let our graph neural network learn more about the molecules. And then I will introduce how our framework updates uh, the graph neural network and how we learn uh, from the datasets. And in this uh, framework, it is similar uh, with MEMO, and uh, we train our uh, model uh, according to the tasks. And uh, each task always split. So we, firstly, we split the datasets according to the tasks, um, according to the uh, molecular properties. And it means different tasks represent different properties. And the tasks in the testing part are different from the tasks in the training part. And then I will introduce um, the training process uh, according to the task one. So the first step uh, in each task, like task one, I need to sample a few examples, a uh, few markers from the task one as the support part. And uh, I will also sample some markers uh, from task one as the query part. And the first step, I need to put the support part uh, into the graph neural network, which we want to train to calculate the loss. And then we utilize this loss and also the learning rate combining the, uh, the original parameter theta to calculate the new parameter theta prime and uh, utilize this theta prime to uh, build a task-specific graph neural network. So this graph neural network is for the task one. And uh, I want to, um, one thing I want to mention is this loss, this loss will not update the parameter of uh, this model. It on, we only utilize this one to calculate the uh, new parameter and build a, a, task, a task one model. And then we will utilize, the, uh, put the query part, put the molecules in the query part into this task one graph neural network and to calculate the loss prime. And then we utilize this loss prime to update this graph neural network. So after this way, you can find this graph neural network is a task specific model. It means it learn more about the, this task. And this model is graph neural network is a task agnostic model, which means it is trained to learn good, uh, to be uh, well initialized and uh, to learn how to, um, how to uh, adapt it to a new task or uh, even use a few examples. And so it can transfer the knowledge among the tasks. And uh, for the testing part, we, um, we also uh, testing it according to the tasks. So the first step for each task, we also sample a few examples, few molecules as the support part and the rest and the rest molecules of this, of this task as the query part. So we utilize the molecules in support part to, um, to calculate the loss and uh, to, uh, to build the task specific model graph gen. And uh, then, um, then we, we put the query part, the rest molecules into this uh, graph neural network to test its performance. And then um, to maximize the information we capture from the uh, molecular structure. We also design two uh, self-supervised modules. The one is boundary construction and another one is item type prediction. So for boundary construction, it means we sample, uh, we randomly sample some atoms pairs and uh, then we utilize um, our learned atoms re representations uh, to predict if these two, uh, if there is a bond between uh, these two atoms. And for atom type prediction, it means we randomly sample an uh, atom of, uh, of the molecule and uh, aggregate its neighbors, uh, its neighbor atoms and edges information to, to predict what this atom is. So uh, we, do, uh, we design two loss function and uh, for our uh, whole 
our joint loss function, we both uh, adding the bond pre uh, bond reconstruction loss and also atom type prediction loss, and we also combining the label prediction loss to do it. And the one more uh, one more uh, design is task aware attention. Uh, here uh, we know when we when we calculate the uh, loss prime to update the our um, graph neural network. We always calculate the summarization of each task's loss to uh, update it, uh, and uh, we will give them weight. But in the traditional way, this weight for of each task are the same. But we know in um, in the training process, maybe a different task could play different different roles. So uh, we define our task aware attention to give each task an weight to uh, measure their importance in your in the um, training process. And uh, we use TLS mean pooling to calculate task representation. And then we utilize this, this self-attention self function to calculate each, uh, calculate the weight of each task. And uh, we uh, do the experimentation uh, on two data sets from the molecular net. And we select six base baselines to our graph neural network and uh, two uh, of them are they opt out for few short learning and the two are for a molecular property prediction. And this is the result uh, of uh, comparing with baseline models. We can find in this, uh, we, we show the result of one shot sighting and uh, five shot sightings. And uh, we can find under five, one shot sighting and the five shot sighting, our model can always perform better than the uh, baseline models. And uh, when we compare with, uh, we, we compare the performance of different data sets, we can find our model can perform better on SEDER than TOX21. It means our model performs better on the data set, which contains more tasks. And the two, we also implemented eight model variants for application study to uh, test the effectiveness of each part. And the MTM is the pre-trained model, ML is the meta-learning, and the bond, bond reconstruction item type prediction, and also task-aware attention. And we can find in this result, the first line is the result of TOX21, and the rest are, uh, are, of, are result of the SIDR. We can find M2 performs the worst. M2 is the, the only one in this variant which, which did not utilize the pre-training uh, strategy. It means pre-training is an important step for molecular representation learning. And uh, M3 uh, performs better than M1 and M2. It means our combination of pre-training and few shots learning is effective. And uh, uh, M4, M5, and M6 means we adding uh, our self-supervised module on the base model. We can find self-supervised model um, can improve the performance. And also M7 is we adding the task aware attention on the base model. It can also improve the performance. And uh, also M M8 is our uh, whole model. It performs best in most cases. So it is uh, it is the good combination of these components. And uh, to uh, further uh, show the effectiveness of our, our model, we also uh, realized the molecular embeddings generated by uh, MetaMGN, TreatGN, and MIMO. We can find our model can best separate the um, blue dots and orange dots, uh, which represents the negative labels and the uh, uh, positive labels. So this is our uh, work. We formulate the molecular property prediction as a few shot learning problem. And we propose a few shot approach meta MGN by exploring graph neural network, self-supervised learning, and the task weight uh, aware meta, meta learning. We also utilize the pre-training strategy. Yeah. And our model can outperform the, the, the current state of our method on two different data sets. So that's all for our work. And thank you for National Science Foundation. Thanks for listening. Any questions?